Hey fam, how's it going? So, man, I don't know about you, but I've been in one of those phases where I just want to watch shit. I want to enjoy the story, like, without having to do much work myself. But I do have two to talk about today. One, I totally DNF'd because I decided to fuck this. And the other, I really loved though. So we're going to end it on a positive note. So let's get the negative one out of the way first because this one was driving me nuts and I know a lot of people liked it but I also know that I'm not the only one with my opinion and that's Billy Summers. This cover though, oh, fuck you, that's so good. Um, I don't know, like it was a story and I was like yeah this is gonna be a three star but then I started noticing something particular. Okay so this is like the synopsis is just like Billy Summers is a man in a room with a gun. He's a killer for hire and the best in the business, but he'll do the job only if the target is a truly bad guy. <laughs> like, okay. I don't know. I feel like anytime that we have a moment to kind of agree with Billy or maybe like him a little bit, you know, like, I don't know. It gets taken from us and we're reminded, no, he's kind of an asshole. He judges aesthetics like a motherfucker. And I began wondering if I wasn't being like overly sensitive or something with like the shit that Billy apparently thinks. Why, why, why are you bonking at me? Listen, this, the next couple of weeks I have to get up early and I'm trying to be in denial about that right now while I'm filming this in the middle of the night. Okay, moving on. <laughs> on a Sunday. But like as I continued on there was one point where it came up like four times in one page. It went from humongous to portly to wide body and just it's like okay this motherfucker has a big old Stetson on and all you can talk about is his roly portiness. Fuck off like what the fuck. <laughs> and I'm really police. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> very serious. So like, I don't know. It's like, I'm pretty sure this asshole has more descriptors that he can use. Like, is it freaking Billy or is it Steven that I really need to have the conversation with? What the fuck? Because seriously, I began using this, this freaking post-it color, right? any time that that happens. Here's the one where it happens like twice in one page and I was like, okay, that's it. I'm using this shit, right? That's where I started keeping tabs. And this is pretty much about where I ended, right? Look at that shit. Do you see? And that's, that's very concentrated right up in here too. And there are times when it's not just like once or twice, it's five fucking times. We have, give it to me. Oh, here's the one with the Stetson. We have Portly. We have Wide Body twice. And then, does you need the scope to see that? <laughs> like, come on, oh, Humongous. He busted out Humongous. But it's like, what shirt is he wearing what kind of shoes does he have on his feet like is there some kind of shit eating expression on his face like what you know and he's he's judgmental aesthetically period like he's talking shit thinking shit about everyone because apparently billy's perfect so that is a point really driven in like ad nauseum <laughs> and it's like Steve, you're better than this. I know you are. So yeah, that's been working on my last nerve. And while we're at it, I just want to report that I still haven't, uh, I'm not very far into Salem's Lot because it's boring the shit out of me. So sh <laughs> but you know what happened? <laughs> Vibe check. So I was watching RuPaul's Drag Race and then I picked the book up and I started reading it and I went <laughs> massive trigger warning massive if you if you don't like any if you give me like 30 seconds <laughs> i've walked right into a scene of a young mother proceeding to beat the fucking shit out of her child 
I was like, wow, was not in the mood. Like I was, I was over here and this story was the fuck over there. Like, wow. Okay. That's what I meant about vibe check. Like, damn, damn. Oh, woo. I just, I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> so yeah. Other than that, like, that sounds so fucked. But other than that, like, it's boring. It's really boring. Is it going to pick up at some point? I'm okay with the fucking slow burn with, you know, it depends on the story. But this is, mm, I know that there are those who really love that one too. I don't know. It's just, I don't even know if I've, I don't, have I made it to page 100? I don't even think I've made it to the 100th page yet. I just... I'm going to pick up everything else but right now, okay? I got a lot of other things that are just like mapping the interior. <laughs> okay, but to finish talking about Billy, it's just the things that were intriguing to me just weren't enough to keep me in, right? To like, I've like, it's not that I'm against disliking the main character. What the fuck ever? It's just... <sighs> And then, you know, something, you know, enter this shit. And I was like, oh, this might get interesting now. Wait for like a minute. And then, and then. So like, I don't, I got other shit to do. I got other shit to do. I'm trying to get certified for this one thing right now. Now I'm just stalling because mapping the interior was trying to make me cry. It was really trying to make me just bawl my eyes out and work through some shit. Here's a synopsis. Walking through his own house at night, a 15-year-old thinks he sees a person in full Blackfeet regalia step through a doorway. Instead of the people who could be there, his mother or his brother, this figure reminds him of his long-gone father, who died mysteriously before his family left the reservation. When he follows it, he discovers his house is bigger and deeper than he knew. So there are definitely things, elements about a particular story that I don't really like, but I liked those, like the house, the house elements of House of Leaves, the Johnny bullshit, and this just, uh, yes, it's, it's not a very long book. So I actually read this on my birthday, the morning. That first half of the day was really trying me, fam. It was wrong. It was just one of those days. I don't like, I'd rather celebrate other people's birthdays. I'm normally pretty neutral about mine. Um, but this was just, it wasn't the birthday. It definitely wasn't the birthday. But you know, I was dancing and singing by the end of the day, so whatever. This story, however, was really trying to make me cry. <laughs> um, I am definitely my father's daughter, so this really resonated with me. Um, let's see my notes. Reading Stephen Graham Jones is like having a dear friend um, or like extended family member, right? If not actual, saying, hey, there's a story I'm working on. You wanna, you wanna read it and tell me what you think? And then you read it and you're like, work in progress, my ass, print that shit. Like those vibes, like it reminds me of when before one of my friends moved to Arizona and left me for... <laughs> we used to do that. We used to walk all throughout Seattle, just working through stories and shit in our heads and working on a story together. And ugh. yes, yes, yes. Something about a baby elephant that is mentioned pretty early on in this story that I was like, I don't even care if that's true. <laughs> I could have gone my whole life without that one. Like, God damn it. Oh, there are lines in this book that are just like a sucker punch. They're just right in the feels. Just like, oh, oh, shit. Like, where is it? Where are you? There are questions a nine-year-old would ask. I know, not a sixth grader. But I think when you're talking about your dad, you kind of go back in years. The more you become a kid, the more he gets to be the dad, right? <laughs> and the spot where the page where I really noted this shit is really hitting home for me. Another effect dad being back was having was that I was less patient with mom now, quicker to dismiss her. 
I mean, sure, that could be part of being 12. But I think it was my way of siding with my dad, too. Uh, like, they're just, I don't know. Maybe, I'm sure it's just going to hit different depending on your own experience and where you're coming from. That was like the last note that I made in this. I didn't make any more. I just freaking read and was in it and was just like, <laughs> and then, oh, oh my goodness. That fucking, mm. okay. I'm going to get a little vaguely spoilerific with you on this, like, I don't like that ending. I love the story. I'm not here to poo-poo on it. I'm pretty sure I still... Did I give it a four just because... <laughs> Maybe I did. I can't even remember. I think I gave it five stars. The story really made me miss my father. Like, I read a review mentioning their love of redemption in the end, and I don't know what they're talking about. I don't... I don't... I don't... I didn't like that. Maybe it's because I'm the one... This ASD, maybe I'm a little biased <laughs> on that. Like, I'm trying to stay vague, but also be like, fuck that, dude. What? Why? Why? Oh my God. <sighs> what? But I've also like seen people be like, so maybe I misunderstood. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. But what I did take from that ending, I don't fucking like that. What redemption? What redemption? <laughs> I feel like my brain has officially begun, like, was starting to, like, take it from me so that it wasn't so fresh and raw anymore, if that makes sense. But I'm still thinking five stars. I still massively connected with this story. So maybe, like, you know, having a moment to kind of, like, get sentimental and stuff and, you know, you know. I don't know. I would kind of put this up there with stories like Pet Cemetery and such. Um, I guess in a way, I would put the end yielding up there. I've already said that before, have I? Or did I take that away by editing? I don't even know anymore. I feel like the, these both of these reviews are all over the freaking place and maybe that's just me these days. I'm kind of all over the freaking place. When I need to, I take notes and it's okay. I am, however, finally almost done with that ghostly story time. <gasps> that bastard is currently three hours long. Like, maybe I can whittle it down, and I have whittled it down a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. But I think it's still gonna be long. Yeah. I will do it in parts, and upload them together, and there will be chapter breaks. I will enable as best as I can. You can come and go as you please, the videos won't go anywhere. <laughs> but it's gonna be long. Like, it's long, long. I'm taking you down that rabbit hole with me. You don't have to believe me, but you're gonna learn some shit. <laughs> I'm also in the middle of reading Peel Back and See. I have an advanced e an e arc from Mike Thorne. And oh my God, how am I supposed to finish this so I can review it? I don't want it to be done. I'm, it's so good. <laughs> oh my God. I have just, ugh. Every single, it's a collection, and every single one of them, I'm just like, shit, Mike, damn, fuck. <sighs> How am I supposed to finish this if I don't want to finish it? I don't want it to be done. I don't want to be caught up. Shit. So I'm probably, real talk, I'm probably going to leave the final story or two for a rainy day. <laughs> you know how I do. <laughs> one of you then <laughs> thank you so much for your patience i've been all over the place and i didn't know you were an acrobat damn you were good <laughs> may the next time you see this face be uh the july version of me and uh wish me luck i wish you luck for putting up with me that's what until next time and beyond please take care i'll try as well